So three questions here, and uh, I wonder if you connected the dots for why I gave you these three questions. We'll see how we go. In further integration, we have seen questions like this actually back since extension one days, right? It's a fairly straightforward application of the reverse chain rule. Do you have any questions about it or is it reasonably uncontroversial? Question one? Question one's okay. Uh, one minus x cubed, you can see it doesn't take much twisting, twisting and turning to get the derivative of one minus x cubed within the integrand. It's just the classic old uh, stick in a, an appropriate constant coefficient. I've chosen uh, negative three just to go all the way there and then off you go. Does that look okay to you? Yeah. Could we put in a negative one into the one minus x cubed to turn it into x cubed minus one? That was the question. Before I answer it, does anyone have any opinions on that? Factoring out or putting in a negative one in order to turn it into x cubed minus one. Thoughts? Yeah, so, I, wait, I, maybe I should ask a question. Do you mean before or after integration, Xiao? Uh, after. After. So you're talking about like after I'm done here at the bottom. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. so uh, the short answer is, as Engeb points out, in this case, doesn't really matter. Totally fine. I should point out, because it's a, a classic error to be made, in this case, we sort of get lucky. You are actually not taking out a factor of negative 1. You are actually taking out five, five factors of negative 1, which happens to also be negative one, right? Uh, because you can see here, right? When you're factoring that out, if you take out negative one, you're taking out negative one to the five, right? And it's actually a fairly common error to take out like, ooh, I see, I see one factor. If, if, of course, we ended up with an even power, you'd be in some trouble, wouldn't you? Okay, yeah. That's true. So being an odd function, we can actually just say, I can use uh, rotational symmetry here by substituting in a negative x instead and then slapping a minus sign out the front and that would be equivalent. You okay with that? All right, well done. Let's have a look at number two. You looked at these kinds of questions on Tuesday. In fact, you might even have a look, had, had a look at this exact question because I pulled it out of 4b. Uh, there are multiple ways to go about this, but this is a method I'm pretty sure Mrs. Lee's showed you, right? What have I done? Could you explain to me what the working looks like? Sasman, what are you thinking? When you have a look at that. Well, you want to change the x to the power of 4 into the different constants so that you have the denominator on top. Yeah, very good. So what I'm trying to do is to split apart this relatively uh, concise fraction into something that looks much messier. You know, if you have a look down to, you know, these two lines here, it's like, whoa, I've got all these different things flying around, but why is it advantageous to me to have them separately? It's simpler. It's simpler. This is our segue into uh, today's lessons. It's simpler for the purposes of integration. Does that make sense? Like, I can look at each of the individual pieces, and I'm good to go. All right? Uh, there's your integral. And then lastly, you might think this one is a bit of a, uh, what's that doing there? Uh, why does that belong? <laughs> Did I differentiate correctly? You happy with that? Okay. Now, this is actually the question I want to fixate on. Question two and question three, there's a theme, there's a connection between questions two and three that I wonder if you noticed. Who left their answer like this? Hands up. Put your hands up a bit higher. I want to see, cause, and I also want to see, make sure you can see the rest of the class. Did anyone, who didn't then? Didn't get to the answer. Okay, so I'm asking, did anyone factorize this? No one factorized? Okay, so my question is, why not? Factorizing is a thing that we routinely do, especially with derivatives. Why didn't you factorize it? Calvin. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered. You asked me to differentiate, I differentiated. Then I flipped the table and I walked off, okay? That's a fair answer. Does anyone want to give me uh, I mean, I, and, and in honesty, I've told you mathematicians are lazy, so that is totally legitimate. Is there any more like, like proper answer we could give? Any takers, apart from laziness, Morgan? Um, I'm guessing in integration, because we have to see the connection between the or, uh, primitive function with the differentiated function, if, for example, the differentiated function is on top and the primitive function is on the bottom, then we can immediately do, for example, log Hmm. We get the answer. Yep. And we can see the uh, differentiated function more clearly in this way. Hmm. Okay, very good. So 
And you're noticing, Morgan, the theme that I sort of tried to connect between questions two and three, right? What I was trying to say was, sometimes you can look at the same object, but depending on the form that you've got it in, it makes it easier or harder to do certain things. Do you agree? Um, in this case, you know the topic we're looking at, it's integration. Uh, in a question like this, not a rhetorical question, uh, sometimes this expanded form is the one you want. And other times, the factorized form is the one you want. Can someone give me an example where, even though you're like, I'm lazy, I don't want to do this, but under certain circumstances, you say, actually, factorizing is pretty much the only way to go. Zhao, what would you say? Uh, when you're trying to find like, t uh, points of like, uh, turning point, uh, okay. equating d d x equals 0. OK, so two things. Number one, yes, if I want to locate stationary points, then it is much easier to read off the location of those, the x values anyway, if it's factorized. Okay? My second point is, and I'm only going to pick this up on, for you guys because especially like now because you're in extension 2 class, um, ddx, what is ddx? d on dx? Maybe you haven't been actually introduced to this language. It's what we call a differential operator. It does things like times plus minus divides. It's an operation, right? d on dx is not an object. It's not a thing that you can act upon. It's an action, right? It is an action itself. So I think we mean d on dx of this function. I can set that to 0. d on dx is not an object that can equal to 0. Make sense? Minor point of language, but important. Morgan, were you going to say something different or similar? Yeah, yeah OK. Uh, so under such circumstances, if I wanted to locate stationary points, go and factorize. It's a bit of a pain. It's not monic, but you can do it, right? Can someone, by contrast, tell me what circumstances will make this better to leave it? What would you might? What might you want to do next that this is a more appropriate form? You guys have given me some great suggestions, but I reckon the rest of the class should know. This is advanced. This is not even extension one. Come on, have a think. Second derivative. Yes, second derivative. Second derivative? Explain a little more, Engay. What do you mean? Um, if you want to differentiate it further off towards like another step, then mm -hmm. it's much easier to just leave it in that form because you have the individual terms instead of like doing it in a factored form. Because then you have to use the chain rule. Pretty close. If I factorized and I found my stationary points and all that kind of thing, if I then take that factorized form in order to then go to the next step, suppose, say, determining the nature of those stationary points, you're going to have, yeah, you, you caught it, right? You're going to have some version of this, right? I can't actually remember what the exact factors are. It's something, something like that, right? And then if I differentiate it in this form, you're like, ah, oh, product rule. I mean, we're pretty good at the product rule, but why not just use this form, which doesn't require any product rule, chain rule, quotient rule? You just go term by term. Does this make sense? 